Hello everybody, Bradley here, and welcome back into another Civilization 6 video. Today we are talking about one of the two districts that were released in the new Frontier Pass, the Diplo Quarter. For some context, I am recording this video in the middle of a gigantic heat wave where record temperatures are being set all across the area where I live. Gotta love climate change, it's fantastic. I am currently running an air conditioner so I don't die, and if you can hear that air conditioner, I apologize, but it's the only way I can record a video without actually melting. The Diplo Quarter recently has definitely been the district I get the most questions about how do you use this thing, where do you put this thing, when should I build this thing, and to be honest with you, it is one of the districts I use the least or that I know the least about, just because it was released relatively recently in Civ terms, and I haven't quite found my favorite strategy with it yet, but I think this is a good point for us to have a conversation about the district, and if you have any good Diplo Quarter strategies, throw them in the comments below and then we can all learn from each other, and this will have been a very wholesome video watching YouTube civilization experience. The first thing I like to do with any district is actually figure out where it is in the game we are getting this thing because that adds a lot of context into what it's going to cost to build it. The Diplo Quarter arrives in our hands, in our clutches at Mathematics, which is right at the beginning of the game where all of that district congestion is happening. What that means is that early on when you get mathematics, you're going to have one, two, three, four cities somewhere in there. You're not going to have a whole lot of cities. Those cities are certainly not going to have 20 population, 18 population, enough population to build multiple districts. And what that means is if you are choosing to build the Diplo Quarter, it probably means you're choosing not to build something else, which is totally fine, right? You might want to build one district and not another. It is just good to know that that's where the cost is going to come in. It makes sense from a game design point of view to have all the districts available to the player, at least most of them available to the player early on in the game so we can fully customize our experience, but building a Diplo Quarter means you're maybe not building a campus or a holy site or an encampment. You can literally just scroll through or a harbor or a commercial hub. <laughs> There's so much here and we haven't, we haven't even looked at this tree yet, which is gonna have, what's it gonna have? It's gonna have a government plaza right there. You have preserves there and you have theater squares and entertainment complexes there. So it's right in the middle. We have like nine dis district options at this point in the game and that makes it a bit tricky. Part of the reason it makes it tricky to build the Diplo Quarter, in my opinion, is that it's not giving you anything that is like tangibly beneficial right away. And maybe that's not true and maybe that's just perception, but from a perception point of view, if you're playing this game and you see this chart right here, you wanna have a higher science, you wanna have a higher culture, you wanna have a higher gold, right? And so because the Diplo Quarter gives you none of those things, it is really easy to underestimate. And while I don't think it's an S tier district that you should build right away in every single game, I think it's a lot better better than people give it credit for and I think I'm slowly starting to integrate it earlier and earlier in my games and I found a lot of other Civ 6 kind of deity streamers or content creators kind of telling me the same thing or doing the same thing in their matches as well. I think there's a slow meta shift towards building the Diplo Quarter earlier. Using our handy dandy Civlopedia, let's take a look at what this thing actually does. Every district has some kind of focus. Campuses focus on science, commercial hubs focus on gold, etc. The Diplo Quarter also has a focus, and that's mostly on foreign policy, international relations, interacting with the other civilizations in your game. The first thing the Diplo Quarter is going to do right away for you is your civilization receives plus one diplomatic favor for each delegation or embassy from a foreign civilization through diplomacy. So what that means is you'll have a pop up on your screen. You guys know what it looks like. Hey, blank, Christina wants to send you a delegation and you'll click accept. Boom, you're going to have the plus one diplomatic favor if you have the Diplo Quarter district placed. Now, depending on the difficulty you're playing on, this could have a varying level of benefits. If you're playing on Prince, where everyone offers you delegations all the time, you're going to have a higher level of Diplo favor, or at least in your average game of Civ, a higher level of Diplo favor than if you're playing on Deity, where no one offers you delegations almost ever. And so there is a little bit of a balance shift here where this district gets kind of, or I don't want to say gets worse and worse and worse as you go up the difficulties, but your, your equation about whether or not you should build it might change right? You might not build your Diplo Quarter as early on Deity because you're just going to wait until those embassies and those delegations start coming in, which just happens at a later time. And so just understanding that different difficulties have different access to these delegations and embassies, which changes your mental equation about whether or not you might want to build this thing. The next thing it does for you is this plus one envoy if it's built next to the city center. Also, enemy spies operate at two levels below normal, targeting this district and adjacent districts. Only one can exist in your empire at the time. So you can only place one of these down, much like a government plaza. So if you are going to place it down, you might as well make it good. 
placing it down next to a city center and a, next to other districts is the best way to maximize this specific effect. Getting one envoy early on, remember, if you're building the Diplo Quarter when you unlock it, which we've talked about, will be easier to do on lower difficulties because you're going to get more Diplo favor from it. But if you're building it right here at Mathematics, one envoy is a lot. That might get you your first sieve. That's happening pretty early on in the game. Additionally, if you've planned out your districts really well, for instance, this Diplo Quarter that we put down in this game, we put it down late. I'm not going to pretend like I prioritized this, but it is being quite effective. It's getting the plus one envoy. It's blocking this from having its fun siphoned, which is nice, or it's le at least making it way less likely. And then I don't have to use spies on any of these districts to kind of stop that from happening. Overall, I would say the Diplo favor is like the A, the A priority, the one A here in terms of effects and which one you're going to want to focus on here. But the envoy and the spying bit of it is really important as well. And you don't want to forget about that when you're placing this district. Now, very briefly, we should talk about what you can actually do with this Diplo favor. So this Diplo favor can be used for a variety of things. The main two, though, the main two that I want to touch on here are actually like using it in the Congresses, right? The active effects here, you're going to get to vote. You can use your Diplo favor for that. The thing that I normally do with my extra Diplo favors, I just sell it. How much do we have? We have 35 Diplo favor. That is not a lot. Is this a bad time? This might be a terrible game to give this example. But if I want to give you 35 Diplo favor, what will you give me for that? Seven gold for 30 turns. So even late into the game, 35 Diplo favor is worth seven gold per 30 turns. So what I'm probably going to do is sell the Diplo favor I'm getting four gold per turn. But hey, either way you win. You either have extra Diplo favor for this or you have loads of extra income coming in by giving it to the AI. Either way, you're ahead. Hooray! Like most other districts, or all other districts, actually, I'm trying to think of a district, like aqueducts. Aqueducts are an example. That's not the same thing, though. Anyways, like most other districts, the, the Diplo Quarter has buildings you can build to make it even better, so let's talk about them. First up is the consulate, and you unlock the consulate right away. Much like when you unlock the campus, you get the library to build right away if you choose. Same here, you're unlocking the Diplo Quarter. Once you place your Diplo Quarter down, you can immediately build the consulate. Now we're starting to get into some really good reasons why building the Diplo Quarter early and why it might, or why building the Diplo Quarter early is a good idea, but why it might be a little underestimated on the whole by a lot of the Civ population. Plus two influence points per turn. This is absolutely huge for acquiring envoys. Influence points are the metric the game uses to give you envoys to put into your city states here. Four envoys, we get four envoys at 250 influence points. We are currently going at plus 14 influence points per turn that's because we're pretty late in the game but early on those extra two influence points is huge and getting those early envoys and getting some early suzerainships under your belt and if you have a couple of city states you really want that's awesome if you want to open up a kill wall play that's awesome that's just so functionally good in every civilization six game that it's it's just awesome it's just good it's just a good ability for the consulate to have the other thing to consider too is if you're getting plus two influence points from your consulate, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to play around with the Charismatic Leader card. In every game of Civ I play, Charismatic Leader, at least for the, a good portion of the game, is just an auto slot and I need a way to generate those influence points so that I can have envoys for city-state suzerainships. I would normally recommend adding this to it so you are getting four influence points per turn, but at least gives you more options because you're getting the two from the consulate. It means you don't need Charismatic leader as badly and does open up the card slot pathways for the or the um the green section whatever the what is it there's the the military one the economic one and the green one the green one opens up a little bit more if you have the diplo quarter and the consulate an enemy spy's level is reduced by one when targeting this city. Pretty cool, right? If you've already put it next to the city center, it'll already have that effect on adjacent districts. Your city center counts as a district. So that effect's already there if you've put it. It's just a little extra bonus, but it's already kind of working. What makes this awesome, though, that was weird, I apologize, is enemy spy's level is reduced by one when targeting this city or cities with encampments. So any city that has an encampment is going to reduce the enemy spy level if they're targeting that city, which is just awesome. It means your governors aren't going to get poached as often. I don't build too many encampments in my games, but hey, at least it's also working for a domination game. You're getting some suzerainships. You're building some encampments. Things are working out. I think it's a great little ability. I think the uh, influence points is more important there, but again, giving us a little extra thing to not worry
worry about you know some of our cities not having our governors poached that's awesome and finally later in the game we unlock the chancery now the chancery is not an overwhelmingly amazing building but it's a good little cap off for the diplo quarter it's gonna give you plus three influence points per turn fantastic we like influence points for all the reasons we've already talked about when this civilization captures or kills an enemy spy receive 50 signs for every level of the enemy spy so this is great for any game where you don't have a load of alliances where people are spying on you they're siphoning your funds they're stealing your governors they're whatever whatever it is they're doing with their spies if you are good on the counter spy if you have your spies in your cities in your districts kind of reducing the enemy spy levels and counter spying and capturing and killing those spies you're gonna get a little bit of science it's not an overwhelming amount of science but it's a little bit of science and it's a nice kind of cap off and a, a nice th thematic fit to the diplo quarter Overall, my advice to every Civ player would be don't sleep on this district. Try it out a little bit more than you're currently trying it. My experience is that most people, including myself, undervalue the Diplo Quarter. That's not to say it's like an S tier district that you need to build right away in every game, but the benefits are they're, they're subtle. They're not as noticeable. They're not as like just, they're not as eye catching as just having like more science, right? But having more Diplo favor, having more influence points, slowing down enemy spies, all of those things, they unlock options. They unlock different pathways throughout the game that are awesome. And because you only have to build one Diplo quarter, this isn't an equation that's coming up in every city. In every city, you have to decide whether you're gonna build a campus or a commercial hub or something like that because you can build as many as you would like. Where, that's not true. That's not true. You can build one in every city but like you know what i mean the diplo quarter you only have to pick one right so picking one good diplo quarter even if it's a little annoying mostly fits well into most games of civ and i think it's a good exercise for us all to do to get some more practice with this district but definitely try it start selling your diplo favor maybe start winning some of these world congresses that you're really passionate about so the ai doesn't take the amenities away from your diamonds or whatever it is they do every game right start getting the, the, the start trying to get those four influence points early on in the game and see just how functionally awesome that's going to be for soothing city states in your game this district unlocks a lot for you but it's more subtle it's more behind the scenes it's not again not as shiny or eye-catching as like a big sign that says oh do you love culture build the the theater square ah it's not like that it's it's nice it's not it's like a nice sip it's like um what's a good example what's a good example it's like a really nice whiskey it's smooth it goes down easy right whatever whatever whiskey preference you like right but all of the hints and the tasting notes they're subtle they're there but you take time to unpack it a little bit the more you sit with it the more you learn to like it all the other districts are kind of like jack daniels just like in your face it's everywhere all the time you can never go anywhere without getting jack daniels this is more of a refined experience it's not going to be all the time you're not going to want it all the time. But when you get it and you sit with it, you enjoy it a little bit more. And I hope that analogy made a lot of sense. Like I mentioned earlier, feel free to leave your Diplo Quarter comments in the comments section below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Go and join the Discord and the Twitch stream. We rock out there all the time. I'll be streaming tonight, as in like tonight when I record this, not when you're watching this, because you could be watching this anytime after it gets posted. But hey, we stream Civ all the time. You should go check it out. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.